Well, that was a right weird year, wasn't it? And yes, I'm talking about 2023 and Destiny 2, the year that we got light for. Of course, the huge build-up to the final shape. And while it should have been a very exciting time for Destiny, it has at least been one with a lot of conversation and plenty of straight-up weird, unexpected and bad news breaking out of Bungie. And despite the fact that according to Bungie, Destiny has a positive future, we've got the final shape dropping in 2024. And of course, based on past experience, it's entirely possible that Bungie could deliver something actually pretty decent with the final shape. Of course, time will tell. But the lead up to that and 2023 in general has been a very strange year for Destiny 2. It all kicked off with Lightfall, Destiny's huge, well, that was weird moment. Which is pretty much what it was. Lightfall's story was kind of meh, wasn't it really? Wishy-washy characters, weird voices. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. Sorry, Nimbus. And the giant strand tutorial that took a number of hours to complete. Lightfall was safe to say one of the rockier expansion launches for Destiny 2 in recent years, especially following the Witch Queen, which was a pretty golden expansion for Destiny. The major expansion that started this year, of course, did plenty of stuff right. Strand itself, despite the massive tutorial, has been pretty good overall. I thought some of the exotic quest content and the raid and season of defiance itself actually had a bunch of fairly peak destiny content but drama has been a key thing for this year of course expansion prices increased going into live fall so did season pass prices and naturally this will raise a lot of eyebrows in destiny and gaming communities in general and then heading into season of the deep eververse came into the spotlight a little more and unfortunately there was nothing that sloan could do about it plenty of conversation going into season of the deep regarding silver only bundles and of course we started to see more silver only shaders which of course later have sold for bright dust but also eververse prices have increased there was a little bit of drama around the recommendation tab for the eververse store that bungie pushed out in season of the deep but of course with the start of the year bungie started hiding the eververse rotation from players which probably wasn't helped by myself we've always done those silver versus bright dust videos and of course they give players the chance to not spend silver and instead spend bright dust which to an extent has probably added fuel to the fire in terms of bungie losing out on microtransaction revenue and stuff like that they probably hated those no silver required videos. And no doubt that has been one of the reasons that Bungie have hidden that Eververse rotation. But the store, microtransactions and monetization have been one of the biggest points of conversation overall this year. And following much Eververse drama, Bungie did throw us a bone in Season of the Witch, where they took the armor set for the store in the season and instead made it a playlist drop as opposed to a purchase. Good job on that one, Bungie. But of course, it was one of the first major signs that Bungie knew, oh dear, players are getting kind of mad consistently and it doesn't appear to be getting better. And so that was a small gesture, hoping to tilt sentiment slightly more in the right direction. And then Season of the Witch itself, in many ways, was a relative win for Bungie. We saw decent activity content, a slightly more engaging story, at least in terms of the major beats, and of course, Eris, I act, whatever the hell that means. Season of the Witch launched as Bungie announced the final shape, of course. And while the early final shape impressions from the showcase were mixed, to say the least, mainly with complaints around the lack of a darkness subclass, and arguably the very reskinned nature of the Pale Hard destination, which I actually think looks relatively cool nonetheless. But there was a glint in the eye of many players with a glimmer of hope that perhaps, just maybe, we could be heading into something more impactful and of course a decent future season with Final Shape on the horizon. But then it all went to sh** again and the bad news eventually came with the Bungie layoffs, bad stuff going on at Bungie and also we're mad because that's kind of what we do. It's at least a little bit true, isn't it? You've got to agree. But what began as a marketing hyped roadway to the Final Shape quickly and suddenly turned into to Bungie's darkest day, at least in the Destiny era. And of course, very suddenly one Monday morning, news had broken of a somewhat significant series of layoffs. But the crazy part being that players were learning this info more or less in real time as Bungie developers and team members were also waking up to it. There was essentially no discretion, almost no warning. And alongside this news, we got the first rumors of a final shape delay. And of course, it was a terrible day for those developers. I still have a lot of sympathy for them and the position that they found themselves in. And for a day or so there, Bungie stayed silent, with the exception of that Pete Parsons tweet, the one where the CEO acted as though they had nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's probably one you should have given a miss, Pete. It was tone deaf, sure, but it was also just weird, if nothing else, wasn't it? Adding fuel to the fire, though, that's when Destiny 2 got nominated by the Game Awards for the best community support. And what an absolute meme that was. Not that Bungie teams didn't deserve it, but it was strange because most of the relevant team had just been laid off. But Big Jeff didn't care, did he? The smiling face of the Game Awards, Corporation, smiled his way to the podium, and after being accosted a couple of times, he thought, yeah, sod it, Destiny doesn't win, sorry boys. It was such a disappointment that even Bill Clinton kid didn't bother showing up. In all seriousness, 
weirdness, though. It just added to the collage of straight-up weirdness that seemed to be unending at this point. But getting back to the season, we knew that season 23 was on the way. And how on earth would this go, given everything that had taken place? Well, we got a teaser, and we were like, yeah, new season, still coming. Riven's there. And then on the day before the new season began, I got a call from Bungie. Yeah, hello, mate. Fancy a chat? Yeah, so we're going to delay the final shape. Oh, really? We've heard rumors about that, so it's happening. Yeah, mate, just thought I'd let you know. June 4th, 2024. The final shape is coming out. Okay, cool. So we've got a seven month season this time. And at the time, of course, it was positive to finally get confirmation of that delay. Bungie also have spoken about some of the updates they'll do in early 2024 to sort of fill the gap until the final shape. But here we are in the seven month season. At least though, Bungie did have an idea to help with that. And very early on in the season, the next saga began, introducing the Destiny 2 starter pack. Would you like a couple of exotics, a sparrow, and some other shite? to help you on your way. No thanks, Bungie. I'm depressed enough as it is. Everyone got mad and Bungie said sorry again. So they went ahead and removed the starter pack. It did serve as a not so happy distraction from the season launch. And here we are, Season of the Wish. Actually, is a decent season in a lot of ways. At least when we look at it on a component level, the coil is pretty nice. There are some good rewards there. There are some good implementations around rewards and the ability to farm materials and stuff like that. And the dungeon has been fun to play. There's also a new exotic mission. And I'd say a bunch of this season is actually reasonably good. But of course, it doesn't break the mold on seasonal content. And this is a seven month season. Yikes, it's going to be a long road to the final shape. And of course, Bungie know that times are tough. And to the credit of the relevant teams over there, they have been very active during the launch phase for Season of the Wish, fixing stuff that players don't like. And communication has been upped. I'd say all in there is a sense of damage control, or Bungie at least trying to seem active and respondent, which is something we've needed for a while now. And to some of you folks, you may feel that I'm being potentially overly negative or something like that, which isn't really the goal. As I've said, there's been a bunch of stuff this year, which has been actually pretty good, but that's been sort of mixed in with a very strange series of community backlashes. And when I say strange, I mean the motions or the ideas of Bungie that end up with those backlashes occurring in the first place. They've definitely been making some strange decisions, but we've also had the perfect storm of bad community sentiment and just bad timing overall as well. But between the drama around microtransactions and the hit and miss nature of a lot of the content that we've had in the past year or so, of course, Bungie find themselves now in the Destiny era at the very least in a pretty difficult position. And we've also learned that Sony can apparently entirely take over Bungie if they like, and that's if Bungie don't meet their financial targets, the ones that they've obviously promised to Sony and more than likely won't be able to meet. So the saga will continue into 2024 with the risk that Bungie will essentially be completely absorbed by Sony and that Sony will ultimately be the decision makers over there, potentially within a year from now. So while I'm personally enjoying Destiny 2 in a lot of ways and I'm excited for the final shape, I'm going to stick with the game. I want to see that 10 year conclusion. I want to see if Bungie can pull back a lot of the players in the community that have felt disenfranchised really over the past few months. We've been here for long enough, so it is my intention to bear witness to what will unfold in the year to come. And in that way, I'm still very much invested in Destiny, but it'd be ridiculous to fail to recognize just how strange this year has been. The fact that we've had more downs than ups, which of course is an unfortunate fact, but it's true nonetheless. However, sometimes in life, you just gotta say, sod it, I'm gonna go have a couple of whiskeys, my mates. Guys, cheers for sticking around. I'll be doing my best to stick with Destiny and keep you posted on everything that's coming in 2024. So if you are still invested in the game, feel free to stick around here on the channel. And despite the negative tint on what we've discussed today, I'm trying to focus on the positives, but give us your thoughts down below in the comment section. How are you feeling about Destiny? What do you think of this last year? And where do you think you'll be in a few months time as we approach the final shape? It's certainly been weird, and I think it will continue to be just a little bit weird, at the very least. But otherwise, cheers for listening to this rant and for all of the support on the channel. But for now, I appreciate you tuning in, and I will catch you guys very soon.